Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well and are having a flare-free day. I apologize for a little bit of the sunshine. Uh, the lighting is not probably super great, but I always like to chat in the car uh, so I can be super honest and open about what's happening in my life without any distractions. So I just hope you're all doing well. I am on a high today because we just saw our house for the first time since purchasing it in March. It's a quick walkthrough that we had um, before we get the keys in about two weeks. So very exciting time. Lots is happening in our world, um, but uh, it was just really an awesome day. I have a separate YouTube video coming out about our new home, what it looks like, what the walkthrough looked like today, and everything in between. And we'll take you along that journey as well. But today's video, I kind of wanted to do a quick health update. Um, you know, if you've been following me on Instagram, you know that I've been having uh, a little bit more of a health uh, update in regards to my thyroid. So a little bit of information has come out since getting some tests done. And I've done a little bit of research on if it's connected to endometriosis or not. So lots on the go. Uh, but I wanted to kind of dive into it today and to be a sounding board for anyone that's going through the same thing. So if you're interested in learning more about my health update with my thyroid uh, and learning more about if it connects with endo or not, then just keep on watching. So recently, um, there's been lots going on in my world and I wasn't sure if this update was related to stress or changes in my hormones or what is happening, but I was basically visiting my parents back home in Toronto and I went to sleep, nothing was abnormal. And I woke up and I had a huge lump. It was, it's gone down now, but I, I woke up and it was a huge lump um, at the lower base of my neck that was just above my collarbone. So my collarbone's right here, it was just about here. It looked like a spider bite had gone wrong. <laughs> that's what I thought, I just thought it was a huge lump. I had been bitten in the night and that's the result of a spider bite. Um, it was really painful to swallow. It was causing a lot of pressure on my neck. Like when I swallowed, it was just not comfortable. Uh, when I swallowed, you could see it go up and down. So I was a bit concerned um, about what this was just out of the blue. And I think that happens a lot of times when something new pops up, you're like, what, what is this now? <laughs> Especially when dealing with endo day in and day out, it's just a lot of energy and effort to kind of deal with a new health issue that pops up that may or may not be related to endo at the beginning stages of your journey with it. So I went downstairs and I was like, mom, dad, <laughs> like I have this huge lump on my neck and they immediately saw it. They immediately knew why I would be concerned. And my dad had just basically said, we should go to the urgent care clinic and get it checked out because it is looking like it's protruding a lot. And because it was causing a lot of pain and discomfort when I was swallowing, I didn't want it to get out of hand if I had an allergic reaction and that my throat may have closed up throughout the day. So lots of risks going on in my brain. So I got my health card, I grabbed my mask and popped into the car and drove over to the urgent care clinic. I might go there more often because there was no wait time. It was like an early Monday morning. The doctor was amazing. She was like, let's test everything. And I was like, where have you been my whole life? Because doctors in my past with endo have never wanted to test anything. So uh, sign me up with you. Uh, but she was amazing. She basically came in and said, I do see like a, a huge lump and I am concerned because it is lower on the neck usually if it's higher up or around your jaw it could just be an inflamed lymph node close to strep throat or things like that but she basically did a swab for strep throat but she said I don't necessarily think it's strep related because you don't have like white markings on the back of your throat and you're not really presenting with the other symptoms that come with strep throat like fever and all of that so she said, I'm going to put you in for some blood work to test your thyroid. So they tested thyroid antibodies, thyroid hormone in general, and TS. Um, I can put more information in the box just because I can't really quite remember uh, all the bits and bobs right now of what they tested. Um, but basically it was a whole spiel of things that they were looking for in the thyroid to basically see if my hormone level was normal or if it was uh, an imbalance. So usually with an imbalance of the thyroid hormone, 
Um, it can be hypothyroidism, which what I've learned is that the, the thyroid gland is not producing enough of its own, um, I guess like hormone to, to, uh, properly metabolize the body to properly do the things that it's supposed to be doing. It's underactive. And with hyperthyroidism, the thyroid is overactive. It's meaning that it, it can be enlarged and can be showing goiters, which are often known as those bumps that are in the neck. So I can pop more details in the description box just because again, it's a lot of unknowns and like I don't know the necessary details off the top of my head like endo, but I will pop the details of each uh, into the description box. Um, so basically they tested the blood work and she also said, I'm gonna put you in for a neck ultrasound just to check for goiters, which again are those larger um, nodules that grow. And she said, I also wanna check for nodules or different types of growths that may be causing some other issues that we don't see on the surface level. And I said, sure, <laughs> let's do it all. Because at this stage, you know, with, with endo, there was a lot of advocacy at the beginning. Um, there was a lot of unknowns and this felt like the same thing. I felt like there was a lot of unknowns at the beginning. I felt like, you know, I've done this before in my life to advocate for answers um, without knowing much about the disease of endo. So I felt confident in myself that I'd be able to advocate for more answers and support. But when you're faced with something new that's outside of your wheelhouse of knowledge, it can be quite daunting. So if you're in the same boat with your thyroid or anything else that you're dealing with, know that you're not alone. It can be very daunting and a bit scary to jump into the wheelhouse again if you're already dealing with a chronic illness that you know. So that's how I was kind of feeling, a bit on edge, a bit uneasy but feeling confident in my own skills and my own ability to advocate for answers that I knew that there were answers around the corner if I didn't have them right away today. So I went home, um, basically told my parents and they were like, okay, like anything in the meantime that they gave you for pain management. And again, it was just Tylenol at that stage. Um, so yeah, so basically I went for the blood work. Uh, that was pain-free and great and uh, felt pretty good and uh, the blood work has come back and they have outlined that the thyroid looks good. So the hormone levels look okay. The antibodies are normal. So they're, they're not fighting off the thyroid in a, an abnormal way. Um, but my white blood cells were high and my red blood cells were low. So that kind of dictates that I was probably fighting an infection of some sort during that time of the blood work. They also did the neck ultrasound. And if you've never done a neck ultrasound, let me tell you, it is a very interesting experience. So it's like any other ultrasound. You go in, it's a dark room, you lie on the table and the technician was wonderful and super funny. And she basically put the gel on my neck and she put the, um, I guess the, the ultrasound machine onto my neck and kind of was moving around a bit. I was scared to swallow because I didn't want to disrupt the imaging that she was receiving on her end, but she said, no, you can swallow, it's okay. And I was like, okay. So she made the experience a little bit more fun and like more upbeat because again, when you're going in for something that can be a bit daunting, having someone on the end being lighthearted and a little bit easy breezy made me feel easy breezy and like less stressed. Uh, so I didn't get the results right away, but on Wednesday of this week, so we're now Saturday, um, my doctor called and said, we have the results of your neck ultrasound. And basically what has shown is that I have a lot of nodules in my neck. So meaning that they're, I'll put the description of nodules in the description box below, but they are basically concerned about the amount that I have in my neck and also the size of some. So basically she said she's going to refer me to an endocrinologist. And when I heard endo, I was like, not another endo thing in my life, please. Like no more endo, but it's an ear, nose and throat specialist that uh, basically is going to check out the neck. They're going to do more blood work, she said, and they might do a biopsy with some tissue within the neck just to test for any cancerous uh, cells that might be in the neck. Um, and we can go from there. She basically outlined that they're not super concerned right now, but they did say that every year I will have to have a neck ultrasound to monitor the size of those nodules. And again, that was a bit jarring <laughs> to hear that I would have to be doing these tests on and off for 
something that I necessarily didn't prepare for on top of dealing with one chronic illness that was endometriosis. Um, but each day is different and each day when it comes, I just take it in stride and I, I embrace the emotions I'm feeling each day just to acknowledge that it is a hard journey. It is hard to sometimes get answers when you don't know what's happening with your own body or to start fresh with a new, a new journey when you've been walking a path with endometriosis or another chronic illness for 12, 13, 14 years. Cause you're, you're an expert in that one. And you're like, Oh, we got that one covered. Oh, there's a new one. Great. Let's walk down this path now. So obviously, obviously it's a bit jarring and a bit uneasy, but one day at a time. And I recommend the same for you take it one day at a time because life can be crazy wild. Things can just pop up out of the blue. You are special and number one and your health is so important. So if you think that something is abnormal or if you if you think it's a spider bite, but people around you think it's probably something more, you should probably listen to them. So just just listen to yourself and listen to your body and take it one day at a time. Okay, take it one day at a time. But knowing myself and knowing the person that I am, I wanted to see if the thyroid situation and all of that that was happening was in some way related to endometriosis. When I did my own research, again, there wasn't a lot of information on endometriosis and the thyroid because high quality research of that sort is not really available right now in 2022, uh, but hopefully one day someone will put their research brain cap on and do some connections to other things with endo. But what did show was kind of interesting. Approximately one in 10 have endometriosis. And this is this is known and this research has been done around the world. And in Australia recently, it was actually one in nine. Um, so I, you know, the prevalence of endometriosis may be higher than one in 10. And I personally believe that it probably is because again, lack of resource resources, lack of diagnostic treatment, lack of, lack of surgery, lack of a lot of things. So it's probably more than one in 10 in my brain, but I'm not a doctor or scientist. So please don't go off of my, my resources. This is just my inkling. But when it came to thyroid disorders, approximately one in eight uh, women or non-binary individuals suffer with thyroid disease in America. So that's based on the American Thyroid Association, and I'll pop their research down below as well. So obviously with that one in eight and one in 10, there is pro a high probable crossover with those that have endometriosis and those that have a thyroid disorder as well. Another report that came out that related the thyroid to endometriosis was in 2019. And again, I'll post the information down below, but it basically outlined that endometriosis or those that had deep infiltrating endometriosis or had, um, you know, a large extent of endometriosis in the body had a higher rate of thyroid dysfunction in the body or imbalance. So that was something to take note of. And another piece of that 2019 report had outlined that those that had the deeper infiltrating endometriosis, as well as the thyroid dysfunction, had a higher rate of chronic pelvic pain. So that was also interesting. So not so much research, but enough to say, okay, well, there's a little bit of a connection with endo and the thyroid. That research also kind of dictates and allows us to understand that endometriosis lesions and tissue react and have their own function and formality and it has its own histology and it, it reacts differently than the other cells in the body. It has its own makeup, which we've known and have confirmed throughout research. My next steps are basically to do a little bit more research about the thyroid. I wanna see if there's more connections with endo. I'm going to also take it easy, <laughs> even though there's research, I love research, but there has been a lot going on in my life that I don't think I'm fully aware of the stress that may be impacting my body and I'm just going to be kinder to myself and just say okay like my body has gone through a lot recently and there's a lot going on and I just need to take it one day at a time so that's my next step I also want to look more into the thyroid hormone itself and to see if any anything nutritionally that I'm missing in my current diet that I could add in to kind of make it healthier and balanced and and to protect that part of that gland and to protect that part of my body, if anything. Uh, and that's gonna come with some uh, support from a nutritionist and a doctor. So again, 
Please don't change your diet or change any part of your lifestyle without consulting with your doctor. But yeah, I just wanted to share that because with endometriosis, there's a lot of information that is out there, but there's not a lot of connections to other things. And I think if we're open and transparent about our lives, and I think for me, I like to talk about it because if we always keep it inside and we always, you know, think it's normal or it's or it's happening just to yourself and you say okay I can deal with it on my own what often happens and especially with endo is that you feel like you're the only one that is experiencing that scenario and I think you know for me it's therapeutic to talk about it it's therapeutic to share and it's therapeutic to let you know that you're not alone and I'm I'm in it with you and if you're going through the same thing with your thyroid or anything else please pop it in the comment box on how you're dealing with it how you're feeling could be good, bad, whatever you're feeling today, know that you're not alone and we're in it together. And if you have any other resources or support or studies that you've found, please again, use the comment box to share because this community is all about supporting one another, especially with complex pathways that we're walking down with our health. So with that, I hope we're all doing well. You're taking it one day at a time and um, we're in it together. You're not alone. And I'm here to let you know we're not alone. Okay. So with that, I will talk to you on the next one and update you on if there's anything else that comes with the thyroid. See you later.